Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and yesterday Apple released watchOS 8.5 RC, or Release Candidate. This is the final version that's released to developers and public beta testers early, and then if they find no additional issues, it's the same version that they'll release to the public a little bit later on. So if you're a beta tester and wondering if you should remove the beta profile if you no longer wish to be a beta tester in the future, you could do that now. However, sometimes they will release a second release candidate if they find additional issues. Either way, if you do remove the beta profile now as a beta tester, you'll be able to get the final version once it's released. Now, this particular update came in at 159 megabytes. That's on my Series 7 Apple Watch. And alongside this, they also released iOS 15.4 RC, iPadOS 15.4 RC, tvOS and HomePod OS 15.4 RC, along with macOS 12.3 RC. All of those are available for developers and beta testers now. Now, before we talk about what's new, let's take a look at the build number. That just tells us what version we're actually on. You can see that we have it installed and you can find that under settings, general, and then about. You'll see the version here, 8.5, and the build number is 19T242. So that lets us know we're on the latest version and let's talk about what's new. Now, the first thing that's new has to do with mail. Now, if you have an iCloud Plus subscription, or just mail in general that you use on your iPhone, you'll have a new option here. So if we go down to mail within our settings, within the mail app, there it is. Under mail, you'll see we now have the always load content directly option. So we can turn that on, it will load the content directly on the watch. We also get an update here where it says hide IP address. This relates to what we have with iCloud, iCloud Plus security, where we might have private relay and hide your mail information as well. And this is just telling you that it's doing that, where it didn't do that prior to 15.4. So it says show alerts, alerts from VIPs and thread notifications, don't ask before deleting, load remote images, organized by threads, and hide IP address. So those have been updated with 8.5. Now, as far as anything else that's new, well, we have some new watch faces. You can see the first one here, and these are related to new watch bands Apple released af after the Apple event earlier today. So that Apple event took place where we had new Macs, some new iPhones, as well as an updated iPad. But in the Apple store, they didn't announce this directly, but we have some new cases for spring as well as new watch bands. So you can see the solo loop here. We have nectarine, lemon zest, mineral green and eucalyptus. So those are some new solo loops. If we go down, we've got some other braided loops, flamingo, starlight, and bright green. Again, if we keep going down, you can see some new ones here and there. The sport band, again, bright green, lemon zest, and blue fog. And keep going down further under the sport loop, we have lavender gray and light lilac, nectarine and peony, as well as oat milk and lemon zest and blue jay and abyss blue, and also midnight and eucalyptus. So we have all of those and we have the corresponding watch updates as well for our faces. So if we go into a watch face with just the color, tap on that, you can see the colors here. So I already have blue fog, but you have bright green, eucalyptus, nectarine, flamingo, and so on. So English lavender and so on to match the corresponding bands if you want to pick one of those up. So they've updated that a little bit if you want to change your watch to that. Now we also have the option on the Apple Watch to now authorize Apple TV purchases from the watch and subscriptions. So if you're using Apple Pay, you have it set up here, you'll be able to do that. That's something a little bit new. Also, you have the option to add vaccination cards and Apple Wallet. They'll also show up on your Apple Watch. It's now supported in the EU digital certificate format. So you can actually see it here on your watch itself. Just adding it into the health app, you'll be able to see that. Now, one thing I think some people will benefit from here is an update to irregular heart rhythm notifications that are actually designed to improve atrial fibrillation identification. This is now updated in the United States, Chile, Hong Kong, South Africa, and many regions where the feature is available. Now I went to the link that Apple provided and I did not see a whole lot of information just yet. So it says page not found when you go to their link. So we'll probably see that with the release of 8.5, but hopefully they've updated it everywhere, although they haven't said specifically. Now, if you're using Fitness Plus, there's also some additional updates there as well. So if we go up to fitness or we go to workouts rather on the watch, on the watch with fitness or workouts, you have these different workouts and things, and there's now new guides that will help you through this with audio hints. So maybe you're using 
Fitness Plus, it will give you an audio commentary of visually demonstrated moves during a workout. So if you set one up, it will give you more information to make sure you're doing the workout properly. There's also the addition of a developer feature or update where developers are now able to express the preference for payment networks. So you can do that within the code and update it there, but it's specific to developers. Now there are no resolved issues that they've mentioned as far as bugs or anything else, but there is a known issue that still remains that has to do with Siri on the Series 3 Apple Watch. So with the Series 3 Apple Watch, Siri may not recognize properly the user's speech. So if you're speaking, it might not understand it properly. They've left this bug in there. Apparently it needs to be fixed with a future update because it's a known issue. However, I'm curious if you're still having issues with that prior to this update. However, it's one of those things that it's hard to say if it's going to happen all the time or just once in a while in specific circumstances. They haven't said as far as that goes. Now, as far as battery life on this, well, I have this on the charger to update. You'll see I'm at 98% and it's just gone down a couple percent while filming this video. So it hasn't really gone down a ton, but let's take a look at the battery health just so you can take a look at it as well as battery life over time. It did seem during the betas earlier on that it was draining a little bit faster than before, but you'll see I'm at 100% battery capacity as far as the health goes and battery usage overall has been pretty good. So I really haven't had any issues with it, with battery. It seems to get me through a day without a problem, although I'm not using it to work out all the time. I do take walks and things like that and it does use it during that time, but if you're using it a ton, it's probably going to be about the same. As you've seen, performance seems to be quite good. I haven't really had any issues with it. It's nice and fast going into different apps, no issues there. And if I go into an app that I don't use all the time, such as podcasts on here, it loads nice and quickly. So that leads me to, should you install watchOS 8.5 RC? And typically I would advise against it if you're not already on an earlier beta because there is no way to go back without sending this into Apple. So if you have a problem with maybe 8.5 RC, it causes a problem with your watch and maybe it just boot loops or has some lockups and odd problems. The only way to go back to the current version is to send it into Apple or bring it to an Apple store and have them send it out and fix it. So at this point in time, I typically don't recommend trying out betas. However, if you're already on the beta, then definitely I would upgrade and at least get the latest version so you can test it out and provide feedback if needed. Now, as far as when to expect watchOS 8.5 to release to the public, well, Apple has told us that it's coming out next week. On the newsroom where they show the latest news on Apple's website, it says with next week's release of iPadOS 15.4 and macOS 12.3, Universal Control is coming out as well, and based on this, this tells us it's coming out next week. Now, they haven't specified a date yet. Typically, it's early in the week, Monday or Tuesday. That's when we usually can expect these updates, and then we'll move on to further updates, such as watchOS 8.6 betas and more, but we'll have those later on with additional features with major changes at WWDC, where we will we'll expect something along the lines of watchOS 9 and iOS 16 and more. So, those are all coming up, so don't expect any major changes until June with WWDC and then later releasing in September around the iPhone and new watch releases. That's typically what Apple does. If you've found anything else in this update, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. It doesn't seem to be a huge update, but there's some nice changes here and there. Also, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description. This is a new wallpaper that comes along with the new iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max in the new green color. So there's a new green color instead of just Sierra blue, gold, space gray, and those sorts of things, or graphite. So we'll have those new colors as well. There's a green and a separate green for iPhone 13 as well. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.